Hello, uh, my name is Damian Carlson, uh, Six Foot Dad on Twitter, here at the V Brown, v Brown Bag Tech Talks at VMworld Europe 2015. And today I'd like to talk to you about DevOps and organizational debt. So before I get into what organizational debt is, let's uh, take a look at a, a cool picture that I got from my friend Matt Calger, kind of uh, illustrating the four key pillars or the uh, key tenets of DevOps. And I apologize for the potato quality. I think this was a screenshot off of an iPad, but uh, there we have it. As you can see, we've got platform, deployment, testing, and people. People are typically the biggest problem in IT, um, you know, sometimes known as the layer eight problem. Um, and uh, IT itself touches on each one of these things. And so um, uh, organizational debt are these barriers that are preventing the agility that you need in order to modernize your application delivery pipeline. Uh, and, and, and that agility defeats the purpose. You know, uh, I would imagine that if you've been in application development for any period of time, you're familiar with some of the, the key different processes and, and ways of going about things. Um, it's, it's very difficult to be an agile organization within a waterfall one. Uh, unit working at cross purposes against each other. Uh, so let's take a look uh, in depth as to what organizational debt is. It can be a number of things. Uh, some of the things that come to mind would be uh, regulation and government or uh, governance, such as change management, security, um, low value policies, uh, silos, or kingdom politics, as uh, I've heard it referred to before. And that's just kind of uh, folks who, who kind of build their organization, they protect it, and then those organizations can end up working against each other. Some of that is influenced by external regulatory compliance, which is totally understandable. But um, other things, uh, you know, other kind of contributing factors to that could be that, that cruft that, that kind of builds up and that bureaucracy that builds up over time. So let's take a look uh, specifically at change management and then to uh, security. So some of the questions that you have to ask yourself about change management, uh, first of all, is to understand why it exists. Um, many times that exists uh, because of past failures um, that you want to mitigate. You know, you don't want uh, someone making uh, uh, root level changes on something that's in production that could end up taking down your corporate external facing website. Um, uh, however, change management can end up being a barrier. You know, long change management board processes, uh, scheduled outages, which are also very understandable, but uh, if, if you're trying to speed your application delivery pipeline, you'll need to understand how your existing change management processes may impact what you want to do as quickly as you'd like to do. Um, and so it's some of the things that I would suggest, and of course this isn't just me, um, I've, I've read a number of blogs uh, by uh, folks within the DevOps process community that bring a lot of insight uh, you know, into uh, these specific areas. And I would encourage you to go to places like DevOps.com and to read up on more because there's, there's a, a great amount of uh, very valuable content in there. Uh, by practitioners. So, uh, change management. You can automate your application environment or your provisioning. Uh, it, um, and then, of course, integrate your uh, continuous integration or continuous development tool chains. So, uh, take for example, you have a development team that is uh, working on actively uh, developing an application. Uh, you want to be able to automate from uh, the actual building of those artifacts um, the, the various uh, you know, automated testing processes that go into that, and then ideally find the right tool chain that allows you to take those artifacts, deliver them automatically into uh, an environment as necessary, you know, uh, QA, test, uh, load testing, and then eventually production. And at each point along the way, you're gonna have to uh, make the necessary allowances to uh, work well within those environments. Uh, so, do you have automated configuration management? If you don't, you should do it because it's awesome. <laughs> uh, you know, I've worked in production IT before. Um, I was actually a virtualization admin that was responsible, uh, partially responsible, uh, for um, the build and the support 
of, a, 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 I believe it was at the time, it was about 42 different vSphere installations at distribution centers all throughout the United States. Um, and if you've ever managed something uh, at a scale of larger than a couple, then you understand uh, the importance of trying to do something in a repeatable fashion, in a fashion that is reportable, um, and then also uh, basically save those things. So you might have heard of the idea of infrastructure as code, which is kind of a cool word, um, but what that really kind of boils down to, uh, you know, according to my understanding, is to be able to capture those configuration management points and then put those in version control. It's a little bit different from the way that many IT organizations uh, have, have done things uh, to date. You know, you might end up uh, making a change on a piece of networking gear or making a change in some sort of a configuration script. And it's important to capture those changes uh, as part of the change management process because if you were to have an outage, then you would be able to go back and look at it and say, okay, Damien made this change, he checked it in the version control, we might have missed a few steps here or there, and now this is what the problem is, but we actually have a record of what happened. Um, there are a few tools out there that might be able to do that. Uh, oh man, I, I can't remember one, uh, I think it might be Rocket Dog, although I could be completely mistaken on that. But um, what that does is it actually tracks uh, Puppet, uh, or the applying of, of Puppet configurations across your uh, organization, and it'll help you kind of determine, ideally, what uh, the applying of those configuration policies might have impacted. So you have an outage at two in the morning, you say, well, Puppet, uh, you know, push this stuff out at 159, um, and now you know why. So that could have been, you know, perhaps someone had made a change without recording that change, and Puppet went back and fixed it, which then could have broken something else. So that's why it's important to, to kind of store as much as possible in a repository that uh, offers version control in order to track those things. Uh, and then once we do get into outages, uh, I'm sure that we've all been a part of it, uh, and especially this tends to happen within siloed organizations, uh, where you end up getting into a blame storm, right? Uh, and a, a, a key tenet of DevOps, just like those, those four pillars there, is cross-functional collaboration, right? Those four pillars all have to hold their weight, they have to work together. If one of them is weak, then you have a serious issue. So uh, what we encourage within uh, folks that are familiar with DevOps culture and processes is to encourage blameless postmortems. Uh, if you've ever had an opportunity uh, during like an Amazon Web Services outage, to look at the postmortems that they are very forthcoming about, they basically lay it all out. You know, they might say, well, this uh, happened at this time and it caused this kind of uh, uh, avalanche problem and then we had a region down and that's unfortunate, but now our customers know what happened. You want to be able to do that within your own organization. You want to be able to go back to business owners and help them understand uh, with varying levels of, of technical uh, depth as necessary based on your audience what happened and then what you're going to do to be able to fix that in the future. So blameless postmortems uh, basically means let's be adults, let's not uh, point fingers and say he or she did it, uh, but you know, actually work together for the purpose of why IT exists. Uh, and it, you know, IT doesn't exist for IT's sake only, although many times uh, it, it, it might be one of those things where you tend to get blinders on what you're doing and why you're doing it. But ultimately, IT exists in order to uh, enable your business to be profitable. We're successful if profit isn't the only point. Uh, so then let's talk about security. Uh, as I mentioned before, external regulations are a thing, right? Depending on the industry that you work in, let's say if you are a credit card company, you have a whole lot of external regulations that you have to deal with. And that is completely understandable, not at all advising that you should go against those things because that is a very bad idea. Uh, however, many times those external regulations might also be tied to internal internal. Uh, regulations and often they could end up uh, kind of building up over time and be a part of those those siloed organizations this is how we've always done it 
Um, we don't know why, but that's how I was trained and that's how I'm gonna train you. And ultimately, those could end up complicating uh, the, the point of why you wanna move to a DevOps process, and that's to speed your application delivery pipeline. This is a really difficult thing to do. I've actually uh, had the opportunity in the past uh, as a consultant to work with organizations that were trying to do this exact thing. And it's, it's difficult, you know, you have to be able to foster uh, the, the culture of working together uh, and, and start to break down those barriers of this is how we've always done it and this is how we're always going to do it and really re-examine why. Is it serving our purposes? Um, uh, and if not, let's make the necessary changes as necessary. And that kind of ties back to your automation as well, because oftentimes those internal regulations are put in place in order to, um, to help support the change management process. So, um, you know, in, in terms of security, what you don't want is you don't want your application developer teams to develop an application uh, and then say, okay, IT, we're ready, and then IT takes a very long time to produce something, and then they say, okay, that's done, here's security now, and oh, by the way, because security's purpose and reason for existing is to reduce exposure to the company, both internally and externally, it may end up getting to the point where, well, we, we didn't take security into account. So it's important to make sure that security teams work collaboratively with your application development and your uh, IT uh, services organizations and just make it part of your natural process. You can do that uh, by configuration management. You know, security has a process. Great. We'll enforce that process within Puppet. We'll check that into version control. And we'll make sure, as part of our normal testing workflows, that we're meeting those security requirements. So at the end of the day, when you pull the lever and you've got uh, your application and environment that comes out uh, on the other side of that machine, you know that you're already meeting the goals that you have to. Uh, so perform your vital connectivity security reviews, which is exactly what I was just saying. Make sure that you, you're allowing for separation of VLANs or ports or, or things along those lines. Uh, make proactive changes. If it's not meeting your needs, make the changes and of course, based on, on your, uh, let's say, external regulatory policies or the internal ones that you've reviewed and come to uh, the conclusion that it supports your purposes, Make sure that you're also making those changes uh, within each one of those application development and, and testing environments. Um, and of course, you know, make sure that you're not taking away the necessary controls that uh, absolutely need to exist, but uh, in, ensure that they are, are built in at every step of the workflow. And uh, you know, ultimately work together uh, to allow your business to be more agile. Uh, so that's all that I have. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, if you'd like to learn more, I encourage you to uh, Google it. <laughs> uh, there's, there's resources like DevOps.com, which have a lot of fantastic blogs. Um, and so uh, that's all that I have. 